Hello and welcome to my very first video, which I actually use my voice in, and today I will be explaining how to create, connect a Unity game, so in this example I'm using a Flappy Bird environment, to an external file, such as Python, uh, basically just to train this AI, uh, AI model inside this custom environment, instead of using like some library to do it. You can create your own environments. So this is essentially done using Socket. Socket is pre built when you install Unity, uh, Unity and um, Python on your computer. So you should, you should be able to just import this at the very start. So let's get started. Um, in our agent class, this is the first one we run. We call data.createHost, which basically runs um, this data script, .createHost, which runs this function. So first, we create our main socket stream, which allows us to connect two, the two applications together. And then we bind it to localhost, which is basically just this host IP, 127.0.0.1, which is a normal localhost. And on a, on a certain port, which I just made 12345 12, for simplicity's sake. And then we listen, which allows us to listen for, another, for a connection to connect to it. Right, so obviously we run the agent first, and then while we wait for this to connect, we run our Unity script, which contains this. Uh, when we run our Unity script, we want to connect it to our socket. Uh, make sure to import system.net.socket, system.net, system.threading, which allows us to connect to the socket. So we connect to it at the very start when we click the play button, which will then get the stream of this host and port, which is the exact same at the very top here. And then we will start a new thread that will be able to receive data from the um, from the connection, and then we will start the thread, start the socket, which will then accept the socket from here, accept the connection from, and then the address, and then we will call back to our training loop, which is right here. And this is essentially when we start training our agent. Now I won't go into much detail about this, but uh, I'm using a dueling double deep queue network here to train this AI because it, it doesn't seem that it's not it only has three inputs two actions so it's actually not that hard but I'll just explain how it works uh, very briefly I won't get into any of the math or like the actual learning algorithms but I'll just go how it works so to, the AI the a deep Q learning network basically learns off of its memory which we store inside of a DQ um, type it's a, it's a data type and then we, what we store in this is our observation, which essentially is the environment da data, such as what is the bird's white position, how far is it away from a pipe, is it within the like the correct vicinity, you know, the middle section, etc. The action is the action that the AI performed, which could be like either jump, if there's like a jump action, or it lets it fall or do nothing for a bit. Next, we have the reward, which is essentially like how much like reward I guess reward the AI is given for doing that action say for example it is above the section where the bird is supposed to be like the middle section and then it does action of falling which it, it will give it a positive reward because you want it to go the AI um, to go down and fall within that middle section but if it goes up it will keep it will keep going towards that pipe and it'll get a negative reward which is called penalty the, uh, uh, the second observation which is essentially um, the observation after it completes the action and then the done boolean, which essentially asks like, is the is the environment done? So like, if did the bird hit a pole after doing this action? Did the bird hit anything during this action? If if it is true, if it's not false, and it will keep continue, which is why we have a while not done here. And if it is true, then we reset the environment and continue on our iterations for our training. So let's get started. Um, line twenty five observation equals data to get state. This will call into our data dot get state right here. So this, if, um, if there is a sock connection, it will can it will send a data which we encode to UTF dash eight, which basically is just universal for our um, for our project. It will send the string get state after we uh, encode it into this format, and then in our socket connection here, um, we have this receive data which is started here. It will just run infinitely because while is running, right? So then we try to get the, um, we try to read the stream data, which if there is none, obviously it, it won't like do anything. But because there is now, it will get the string, it will decode it from the UTF-8 format, and then it will go back to this 
get state string here. If get state, then we start setting its data, right? We do two send equals board bird deck that game out blah 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 dot environment data, which is essentially just this, which is like all the data, you know, the y position, distance from the pipe, stuff like that. And then we separate them by com I think we separate them by commas. And then what we do is we just convert it convert the string here into the UTF again. And then we stream that right, which essentially just sends the data back to our Python file here. And then if data, which is which we receive, five thousand essentially the amount of bits, like the max bits it can receive. Just don't make this number too low. You can make it any number you want. That decode first we decode it, then we receive the data. And if there is data, we split it. Um, we split the numbers by this co by the comma. That's why we use the comma. And then we could then convert this to an array. Normalize inputs. I normalize inputs in Unity, but we just here we essentially just convert it to a NumPy array, which just makes it easier to edit. And then we return it to our agent, which is then stores inside the observation function. Uh, observation line 26. Um, we just um, choose an action. It could be either be random or based off of the AI's knowledge about the observation. Depends on your epsilon greedy policy if you're using that at all. Next, we have something interesting here. Line 27, reward done observation equals data dot play step action. Um, you can see there's actually three variables here. This is how I did it. Uh, data dot play step action, data dot play step action, right? Here, we send play step colon and then the step, which is essentially the action that AI performs. This colon is very important. Let me show you why. Um, so obviously we d we just de uh, we convert it back. We use play step. We check if the message contains play step, right? And then we split this message from its colon into two separate um into into an array. First index being play step, the second index being the action. And then we then play the step based off of step uh, of index one, which is essentially the action um, variable, without having to like do anything with this play step here. This essentially just is a marker for us. So it tell it basically just tells us, hey, we're playing a step. Play the next step after this colon, and it'll do that. So this play step function here actually, um, let me find it. It calls on this play action. Normally, um, in reinforcement learning, in this play action, you want to return three things: the reward, the done, and then the next environment state. So that's what I do exactly here. Um, let's say, for example, it has hit a pipe, which means the game ends because you know when the bird hits a pipe, it's over. So we return a negative 50, which is a penalty for losing the game. True, because done equals true, right? You just ended the game. And then another colon here, which, and right here should be the um, the next, the, the environment state after this action has taken place. But I do it up here, you know, s plus equal, and then the environment data. Same thing as up here, but we just do it after this the um, action has been performed. And then we just encode it back and send it back. So back in the Python script, play step, we will actually split it based off these colons. So these colons are essentially just markers that tell us when like um, each variable is then created, right? So we return result list zero, zero being the index of the reward, return list one, which is essentially the the um, the, the done variable, and we normalize the inputs, which normalize inputs actually just converts to an NP.array. array, and then array form of our environment data after the action and then this like entire section here just like converts the string into its data type right like if it's a flow if it's a boolean things like that and it'll send into each of these separate um python variables next we just store this transition which means we store it to the ai's memory and then we just train our ai based off of that uh, here's an here's an AI, AI model. I'm not gonna explain all of this. I could I could make a video explaining all of it, but not right now. This is just about like how to do connection with sockets. Anyway, um, so that's essentially it. We do data dot reset after this done variable re returns true, and when we do that, it will just reset environment, which just resets the entire environment. Right, it will like reset where the bird's position is, or reset like all the pipes, things like that. Oh, and one final thing to mention: this is semi-important. We use Unity main thread dispatcher. You can search it up online uh, and download it, which essentially allows us to run these commands on the main thread because I think that's I think Unity only allows you to run right on the main thread. And without this UTM 
you uh, you need main thread dispatcher, we would not be able to actually run any of these scripts because it's within our thread. It would to run inside of our main thread, which is our Unity thread. And then once we run our Python agent and then our Unity environment, it we will get a Flappy Bird that plays. Um, we we'll get area to play Flappy Bird. So that's essentially it. Thank you for watching, and if you found it very interesting or at least helpful, please make sure to subscribe or follow my GitHub. I, my GitHub is really epic, I swear. Thank you.